Shapes are the building blocks of a design and they basically make up everything you can see on a screen. Take this button here, for example. It's a share button that's made up of a rectangle. Here we have the present button, that's a triangle. And just overall, wherever you look, you either have rectangles, lines, circles, ellipses, polygons, stars, or a combination of these. And so this means that basically any program that you can work with, be it Figma or Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator, usually contains tools for these simple shapes. Um, so let's go through them one by one. So we have the rectangle tool. We can access that uh, by pressing R and then click and drag. You can see that right now I'm changing color. Make the rectangle darker. And I can also not hold down the shift key and you know create any aspect ratio that I want. So that means if I press down the shift key it's going to maintain the square one-to-one -one aspect ratio. Um, so you can see that once you actually create a shape, you get various options on the right-hand side of the, of the Figma interface in the design panel. You get opacity, you get a fill color, and you can change, you can add more fill colors. I'm going to explain that later. But basically, here's what you can customize about the shape. And the rectangles and squares are not, of course, not the only tools we have here. We have you can see we have a line tool, arrow tool, we have an ellipse tool, polygon and star, and also um, image placing tool. So if I want to make a circle, I can. I have two options. I can click here and then select the ellipse and then click and drag, or I can press O and then click and drag, right? So the result, result is the same. You can also see that we have these letters here that basically say what are the keyboard shortcuts for uh, these tools. So when uh, we press L, we can create lines. So L stands for line. That's pretty straightforward, I think. Uh, if we press Shift L, that's, uh, that's an arrow. Again, we can customize uh, the thickness of the line. We can select what are the um, endings. You can see that this, you know, if we zoom in, if I select that none, there is no basically where the line ends, the stroke ends as well. Whereas with uh, this one, it kind of does a nice smooth effect on the stroke and also square it where it basically extends by half the width of the stroke and then, you know, creates a square like this. And same with lines. So you might have noticed that we have something called a fill and then something called stroke. I think the best way to uh, explain the difference between the two is just that I'm gonna show you. So this is a stroke, right? I think that's pretty, uh, that's pretty straightforward. And um, this red, that's a fill. You, we can see a bit through this square, that's because of the opacities that's set to 80. And so you can see that we can, we can add more fills and more strokes. So for example, I have a black stroke right here, but then I can add another one and it's gonna be white and it's gonna be half transparent which means the end result is going to be gray. I can play around with the stroke and if I go all the way to 100, it's completely visible and the black one is not visible at all. So um, as if it's not there, right? And since it's above, since the white one is above the black one, the white one is visible, we can switch that around and uh, now it's the other way around. Uh, same with fills. I can add a black fill. I can select the opacity, I can uh, ch choose a different color, right? Cyan on red, I can experiment with this, you know. So you can have multiple fills and multiple strokes. If I turn everything off, I have just a rectangle that's not visible because there is no fill nor a stroke. Create a gray fill again. So that would be rectangle tool, ellipse tool, line tool, arrow tool, then we have the polygon tool. Uh, we can select that and then click and drag and it creates a polygon. In this case, it's a triangle. On the right hand side in the customization panel you can see that something called count appeared here that's not present when we have a circle selected for example. What does that mean? We can create a pentagon, a hexagon, uh, this thing, I don't even know what it's called. Um, you can specify the number of co corners with this uh, setting and you can go all the way to a lot apparently. Let's stick with six and again I can add multiple fills, I can add multiple strokes, can combine, you can do whatever you you'd like. Right and then we have finally the star tool. I'm selecting the star tool, click and drag. There are some extras in this area and this is again count. Uh, customize the number of points I guess and then I can specify the angle 
of these of these uh, beams so you can kind of create something that looks like a badge and that's like that's very important to know you have there is this is called a star tool but that doesn't mean that you're only lim limited to a star by uh, combining you know these settings you you are then able to arrive at a completely different result something that actually doesn't look like a star, right? For example, this. Well, this kind of looks like a star, but let's say this. This doesn't look like a star, even though it's purely a star tool. So these are the basic tools. These are the basic shapes that you can create. Um, you can set up fills, strokes. You can adjust the opacity. You can adjust the number of corners and angles and everything that these uh, shapes offer. And so now you might be asking, oh, all right, but where is my blob tool? What if I need to create a shape that is really complex, right? So if you if you need to create shapes that are more complex than these that I, I just specified here for you, you're gonna have to start getting a, a bit more creative, right? So there is also uh, something called a pen tool that you probably know from, uh, if you have worked with uh, different design software in the past, you definitely know the pen tool. That's very common where you can click and uh, kind of create your own shape. There is hardly ever a tool for a shape like this. And that's a good thing because it's so specific that um, there is there's no use, right? I can also click and drag when cr establishing these points, which means that I'm gonna affect the curvature of this. Let me know if you'd be interested in a full tutorial on the pen tool. There is quite a lot of things that can be done with this. Definitely extends beyond the topic of this video, but essentially the key thing to know is that the, sh uh, the pen tool allows you to create really complex shapes, basically any shape you want, right? So we created these with the help of a pen tool. And then we have something called shape customizations or shape modifications. So that's when you really have to create something really complex. And that's kind of where there is not a single tutorial for this because I will just show you the functions that are there and you will then have to be able to combine these in order to arrive at a specific result. By the way, I have a playlist of icons. I have a lot of icon tutorials on my channel and that's all about modifying shapes and customizing shapes. So if you're definitely interested in this, definitely go check out the icon tutorials on my channel. All right, so here we have three things that fall under shape customization. We have manipulating vertices, corner rounding and Boolean operations. Let me just show you what these are. If I select this hexagon and then press enter, this is what I see. I see these points and these points can be manipulated with. They can be moved around. They can be deleted. They can be joined and they can be added, right? So these are, these are called vertices. You can see that already we are creating something that doesn't look like a hexagon at all. It's something completely different and that's why I'm saying that you need to really start getting creative with these modifications and you need to think about each and every use case when you want to create something. And then there is corner rounding. I can select this object and I can go to here to corner radius and I can just set it up to 20, let's say. This, change, this changes the shape even further, right? This is just a completely new thing. It looks soft, it looks smooth, nothing like the hexagon. And then I can even press enter again, select a specific point and then just modify this corner, right? So now this is, we are getting just miles away from the initial shape, right? We are just, just completely something completely different. You really have to start thinking for yourself here, right? So, and the possibilities are really endless. I can add a new point and I can make that sharp and I can add another one and that would be rounded, right? So now we are just, would you guess, if you had to take a guess from which shape this shape was built, I think you probably wouldn't guess a hexagon, but it, it, it is the case nevertheless. So that's corner rounding and manipulating vertices. Then we have Boolean operations. These shapes can be, when you select two shapes, you can intersect them and create a whole new shape. You can subtract them and again, create just something, again, completely different. If you would like to learn more about Boolean operations, about uh, subtracting and intersecting shapes. Go check out my videos. I already did tutorials on this. It should be on the screen right now. 
and in the description below. And to show you how this works in practice, why don't we try and build an icon that I created? Here we have a map icon, right? And now the question would be using these basic shapes and these operations, how can you arrive at this result? With experience, you should be able to break this down and kind of create this icon on your own. But let, let me just walk you through the process. When I look at this icon, I'm going to notice that this was a rectangle previously. We have lines and we have this shape that's a little bit more complex. So I'm going to start with a rectangle and the rectangle doesn't have a fill, but it does have a stroke. The stroke is positioned at the center, smaller, it's around this thick and there are points that have been moved downwards and then upwards. And we have one, two, three, four vertices on the top and four at the bottom. So I'm gonna clicking and adding vertices. Now we have five on the top and bottom. So I'm gonna remove these two, delete, and select these two and then command J to join them. And it's a little bit wider than this, so I'm gonna extend this and then I'm gonna select these two and these two and I'm gonna move them up. You can already see this map starting to take shape. And I'm gonna adjust the corners. Now we have the basic outline, right? And we and we use the pen tool or the line tool actually. We're gonna create we're gonna use the line tool to create a line. The line is uh, gray, it's two pixels wide, and it's this big, and it's got a rounded ending. Everything makes sense so far? Let me know in the comments below if there's anything unclear. And now for the, this location icon, I can simply create a circle. Again, I'm using the ellipse tool, and then I'm gonna select this color, pressing enter, selecting this vertex, moving it moving it, it downwards and then selecting this tool that will change the sharpness of this uh, vertex and then i'm gonna i'm gonna extend these to make it a little more heavy towards the bottom and then another ellipse I'm gonna place that over this one and then it's not gonna be precise, it's just approximate like these two and then subtraction. And um, yeah, here we are, I think that's it. Now, the only thing missing would be creating the shadow, but uh, it's here. I mean, this is how you create more complex shapes from very basic uh, tools. And so you can see that the process by itself is very simple. What is complicated is to know how to do this. And you can find this out by, just by trial and error and experience. So always when you see complex shape and icon, you can start breaking this down in your head and saying like, okay, this is a rectangle that has been modified. This is, this is a, an ellipse that has been modified as well and it's being modified in this way, this way, and this way. And then once you get really experienced, you are able to look at something, figure out the process, and then do come up with a list of steps that need to be taken. And then when you're really experienced, you'll be able to kind of create multiple of the multiple lists, multiple approaches, compare them in your head, which one is the fastest, and then do that one or just choose the one that is most fitting towards your specific use case. Um, so yeah, again, as with everything, it does get easier as you keep practicing. Yeah, so you have seen how to create basic shapes, how to change colors, how to add strokes, how to manipulate with them and modify them using, vertic uh, using vertices and corner rounding and also Boolean operations, which I already explained in depth in my previous tutorials. So definitely go check them out if you want to find out more about this. And I'm curious if there is anything unclear, if there's anything you want to find out, let me know in the comments below. I hope this has been useful. If it was, I appreciate you leaving a like. And if you're interested in Figma tutorials, definitely go and check out my channel. I specifically have a playlist for Figma basics where I go over the basics of working with Figma. Thank you for joining me and I will see you in the next one.